Hello and welcome to the time slot. This time I'm going to take a look at a brand that uh, you might not have seen very often, Clerk. Founded in 1874 and still owned by the Clerk family, over the years they've been providing watches to the rich and famous across Europe. If you are based in Europe, you might not be very familiar with the brand. This is because today their focus is primarily the US and Asia. Today's Clerk designs are diving watches and serious ones at that. Now this is not my first Clerk watch review. Back in 2011 I reviewed the previous incarnation of the Clerk Hydroscaf for the Watch Lounge website. I'll put a link at the end of the video. There are two things that strike you immediately about the Hydroscaf. First, it's a big watch. At just under 50 millimeters across, this is a serious watch. It's tall too, so best worn with a shirt or adjustable cuff, a t-shirt or perhaps even a wetsuit. The other thing you notice is the color of the strap. But as we've seen with the recent Urwerk 105 TA Black Lemon and Black Orange, strong color is no bad thing. And if this wouldn't be your choice, there are of course other color combinations available for the strap, case and dial. So you shouldn't find, uh, have too much trouble finding something that works for you. Now about that strap. Those of you who have been following these videos will know that the strap is for a, a very important part of the watch for me. As a diving watch, this strap is of course vulcanized rubber. Okay, we can discuss the color, but I have nothing but praise for this particular one. The steel case makes this a heavy watch, but the rubber strap means that it stays put on the wrist despite this, as it grips nicely. Just as important, it isn't too sweaty. This is a common problem you find with cheap rubber straps, and luckily it has been avoided here. Buy a cheap rubber strap if you must, but don't say I didn't warn you. The main difference between this and the earlier model is that this is a chronograph. All the main hardware is on the right hand side of the watch and has a good positive feel to the start stop. The reset feels like it needs a slightly harder push and is disabled if the chronograph is active. Not always the case with some manufacturers, but it's actually a very good safety feature as it reduces the possibility of damage. The sub-dial layout is a little unusual. The right hand dial is actually a sweep seconds, so it's constantly in motion and the left hand dial is a night day indicated with hours. The chronograph functions are actually indicated by what appear to be two seconds hands, one white, one orange. The white hand is indeed the seconds, but the orange hand is a minutes indicator. And I have to say I particularly like this. Because all the chronograph control functions are on the right hand side of the watch, the small fold over clasp used for rotating the bezel in contrast to the earlier model I reviewed is now on the left hand side at the 11 o'clock position. Now being right handed I find this to be a slightly more fiddly but as I haven't taken it diving in normal use it shouldn't be too much of an issue. The action of the bezel seems to be unidirectional and on a ball bearing ratchet. Common in sailing but quite unusual in watches a quality touch. This edition of the Clerk Hydroscaf is probably a bit big for my scrawny wrists but I have thoroughly enjoyed my second outing with a Clerk watch and I hope I'll be able to take a look at the GMT when it's available in a couple of months time. Clerk has a dedicated following and they are certainly worth considering when you're undertaking your next watch purchase. For now, this is the time slot. I'm Ian Ellering.